Well, every bishop in the church has to be assigned to a place. Uh, now, I'm the auxiliary bishop of Los Angeles, so in a sense that's my place, but I'm not the ordinary of that diocese, meaning I'm not the one who's responsible ultimately for that archdiocese. That's uh, Archbishop Gomez. So every auxiliary bishop is assigned what they call a titular see. That means a kind of title to the see. And it's always a diocese that existed at one time, but is now, for whatever reason, defunct, no longer exists. But you're assigned to it in a sort of honorary way. So my titular see is Macriana in Mauritania. Now, Mauritania was a Roman province of North Africa. And of course, that was a pretty thriving part of the Roman Empire for a long time. And Macriana is a little uh, area in this um, section. Well, Macriana is not at all far from Hippo. Hippo is a town on the Mediterranean coast in this province of, Macria of, of Mauritania. And um, St. Augustine, who was the bishop of Hippo, would certainly have known Macriana and Mauritania. It was in that region. And it was flourishing at his time. Now, that area was overrun first by the Vandals, and then eventually um, uh, Islam came and really took over that whole area. So those dioceses, including Hippo, are long defunct. But I was actually, I had nothing to do with it. It's simply given to you when you're named a bishop. But I, I must say I was delighted with it because the Church of North Africa being the Church of the Great Augustine and Macriana being not far from Hippo, a place that Augustine would have known, uh, that meant a lot to me because I've, I've felt this long uh, connection to St. Augustine. So uh, I was very pleased with that. Yeah, something that people can find interesting is um, you're ordained a bishop, of course, by a bishop, who himself was ordained a bishop by a bishop, and you go back. Because at the heart of, of the Catholic understanding is that it's part of an unbroken line that goes back to the apostles. You're therefore a successor of the apostles. Now, we can't always trace it in detail. We can't name it all the way back to, you know, St. James or somebody. But we can trace it back fairly far. So um, bishops can find that interesting to trace their genealogy, their heritage. Well, I was ordained by um, Jose Gomez, who's the Archbishop of Los Angeles. So Jose Gomez was uh, called from Texas to um, Denver, and he was ordained a bishop by um, Charles Chaput, who's now the Archbishop of Philadelphia, which makes um, Archbishop Chaput my Episcopal grandfather. I'm actually very pleased about that because he's someone I admire greatly and has been uh, he's kind of a model for me in many ways. Now, you trace his back, he was ordained a bishop by um, uh, Cardinal Pio Laghi. Now, Pio Laghi was the uh, papal representative to the United States. Um, now, if you trace it back even further, I can't name all of them, but in that line is uh, St. Pope Pius X. And so St. Pope Pius X, early 20th century, is an Episcopal, like, great, great, great grandfather of mine. So I, I just find that sort of fascinating and interesting. And now you go back behind him, and you can trace it all the way back to maybe sometime in the 1500s, I think, and then they, they lose track. But um, the faith of the church is in this unbroken line, going all the way back to the uh, apostles themselves. We know Cardinal George was um, sort of a hero of mine, a mentor to me, um, a bishop I greatly admired. and. Uh, I mentioned that at the end, when I was announced formally as a, as a bishop out in Los Angeles, I mentioned how he was a mentor. So Father Dan Flens, who was Cardinal George's longtime secretary, heard that and he said, I wonder, would you like uh, a pectoral cross from Cardinal George? And I said, well, yes, I, I'd, I'd be delighted. So I went down to the house, Cardinal George's uh, house, and Father Flens brought out this box that had a number of, of pectoral crosses in it. And the one that, that struck me was this beautiful a gold petrol cross with a bas relief on the front of the crucifixion and then on the arms of the cross, the little depictions of nativity and the Annunciation, I think it is. But then in the back, there's a coat of arms. And so I said, oh, this is, must be the Cardinal's coat of arms. And Father Flynn said, no, that's John Paul's coat of arms. It was a cross that had been given to Cardinal George by John Paul II when Cardinal George did the retreat for the papal curia. So anyway, it struck me very powerfully because Cardinal George is a great hero, and then behind him, you know, another great hero of mine is John Paul II. So to have a petrol cross that has a Cardinal George reference and a John Paul reference uh, meant a great deal to me. So that's the one that I, I chose, and I'm just delighted to have it.
You know, prior to um, being ordained a bishop, you have to go on a canonical retreat. So I did that, and uh, I must say what really struck me is I read a lot of the texts about uh, being a bishop, um, some of the formal statements of the church in Vatican II, and John Paul II's Pastor is Gracious, which is his statement on, on bishops. What struck me, among other things, was um, the relation between the bishop and Peter, because the bishop is a successor of the apostle, so he's, he's the successor of those who sat in an intimate circle with Jesus, under the headship of Peter. So Peter is the, is the head of that circle of disciples. Well, it's still true, isn't it? So the bishops of the Catholic Church are bishops only in the measure that they gather around Peter. They're, they're not really governing the church apart from him. They're related deeply to him. And so it just caused me to muse a lot on the pope that um, has appointed me bishop, namely uh, Pope Francis. Uh, I was there in Rome when he was elected. I was doing coverage for NBC News. I was up on this perch and out came this figure that uh, you know, no one had predicted. None of the pundits predicted uh, Jorge Mario Bergoglio, but there he was. And, and I saw him from the moment he came out in that extraordinary gesture asking the crowds to pray for him and so on. And then we've all seen his papacy unfold in this rather remarkable way. I'd say one thing that really links me to Pope Francis spiritually is Evangelii Gaudium, his great statement. In fact, you know, I'll tell you the truth, uh, though I, I kind of knew that the non nisite domine would be the, the best model for me, that's another one I thought about seriously, was Evangelii Gaudium, because it links me to Pope Francis, his great encyclical, but also something I've been convicted of for a long time, that it's the joy of the gospel that uh, we lead with. As I read that text, um, there are so many themes that I resonate with. And, uh, you know, not beginning so much with the hot button issues. Don't begin with what the church is against. Begin with what the church is for. Begin with the joy of it. Um, so that links me spiritually, I think, in a deep way to Pope Francis. And uh, I'll always be linked to him. The fact that, that he appointed me a bishop um, will always mean I'm, I'm connected to him uh, spiritually. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that.